What is up everybody? Don't know. Welcome. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Harry Farrell and this is where I speak about my life. I don't know this is patient. Feel free to like, comment, share, and if you are new here, subscribe to my channel. I would truly appreciate that. So in my last video, I spoke about the food that I should avoid as a dialysis patient. So in this year video, I'll be speaking about the foods that are good for me, the foods that I can have as a dialysis patient. Now, I have this right here. It's uh, like three pieces of information. This is like given to you when you get, um, when you are studying up on dialysis, the nurses are sure to get a copy of that so, to help you follow with, follow with your renal diet. But to make it simple, I separated um, what I can eat from what I can eat. And I only wrote down the points that I'm going to use in this video. On my book. So, just like in the last video, I'm going to go for it with you. Now, remember, if you want to know more about the renal diet and the food that you can have, please feel free to do a little research yourself. You can Google it and get a little more information for yourself. Also, I'm not a dietitian, neither am I a doctor. So, this it's from what I have researched and what I've been practicing for my eight years on dialysis. And there are also some other foods that I will mention there that are not known to Dominicans, but somebody in another region or another place might know about it. So anything that I mention I don't know about and you know about it, feel free to let me know what it is or what you know about it in the comment section below. So now, let's begin. Now I must say, compared to the list of foods I should not have, this list is shorter. It's a pity, but it is what it is. And also, some of the foods that I mentioned that are high in potassium or phosphorus, I might mention some of them there because according to the renal diet, Everything that you eat has a potassium or phosphorus or both of them in it. So the idea of the renal diet is to limit the amount of potassium, phosphorus and sodium that you take in on a daily basis. So some of the foods that are high in potassium, there are ways of preparing them for dialysis patients. So and I'll also mention that to a later part of the video and some of them like the fruits and vegetables that are high in potassium and phosphorus a dialysis patient can also take them but it's according to the serving size so i will try my best to mention all of that for the video so let's go so some of the foods i can eat for the first section we have meat fish and poultry so we have low sodium cold cuts which are roast beef turkey and chicken now in my for me i mostly eat chicken and fish i can't eat turkey but i can't eat it too often because sometimes it really upset me okay we also have heart spleen lungs shrimp lobster crab and tofu then lower down we have natural hard cheese but with a limit to three ounces per week and then we have eggs i normally use the only the white of the egg and throw away the yellow 
for the second section we have fruits and vegetables. Now in this section it says all fruits and vegetables. So as I said we have most of the fruits and vegetables contain potassium but on the list of the foods that I can eat, it all fruits and vegetables, but they are limited serving size. So I will take a picture of that and post it up also so you can see the different serving size of fruits and vegetables. Now on the diet it says, um, as a dialysis patient, from the entire list of fruits and vegetables, I should choose two servings of fruits and two servings of vegetables per day so it's still an amount too much sometimes it's one teaspoon or half a teaspoon but i will snap a pic and show you so let's continue with the list on the fruits and vegetables also says corn, raw mushroom, green peas, and potato must be limited to half cup, no more than three times per week. And on the additional items in my last video I mentioned I should not have any fizzy drinks, but here it says that I can have ginger ale and root beer. But honestly, I hardly have any of these. The last time I drank um, ginger ale was sometime like, I think it was last of December. So, I hardly drink those. Uh. Okay, the next section we have breads and cereal. And on both lists, that seems to be the longest. Like, is. I guess bread and cereal is the best thing for me, as they say. So, let's go. Okay. Plain bagels. Bagels are very expensive in Dominica, but I managed to get some every other month or so. Then we have something they call brioche. I don't know if it's how it's pronouncing, but B R I O C H E. I honestly don't know what that means. And chala. C H A L A H. I don't know what that means, how that is either. Then we have cracked wheat bread. Quasa, I love quasa. Then we have crumpets, English muffin, French bread, Italian bread, crazy roll, raisin bread, taco shell, white bread, and plain pita. That is plain P I T A. That is the list of breads. Then we have a list of cereals, which are corn bran. Corn checks, corn flakes, corn meal, cream of rice, cream of wheat, grits, puffed rice, rice krispies, rice checks, and rice flakes. To be honest with you, that is a lot of rice. So, the list of cereals, all I've seen is mainly corn cereals and rice cereals. So, as I say, it is what it is. If that is what it says best for me, then. That is what I'll stick to. Okay, we have crackers. We have Melba toast. Rusks. That is R-U-S-K-S. Because with my mouth is I can't pronounce everything properly. And then we have unsalted soda crackers. Oh, I forget. Under the list of sweetened cereals. So the top list of cereals were plain. So we have sweetened cereals as well. We have Apple Jacks. Captain Crunch, Chris Picks, Fruit Loops, Honeycomb, and Tricks. Okay, so continuing on the list of what I can have, we have some cakes and other stuff. So we have Angel Fruit Cake, we have Arrowroot, Fruit Pies, we have a Pound Cake. Pound, like a one pound cake. I guess that is plain cake, like we normally make in Dominica. 
Then we have shortbread, social tea, sponge cake. I think my mother made that one for me. It's very nice, but it's just like dry. I think you only use the white of the egg in it. Then we have white pasta, white rice, rice again, and yeast donuts. Okay, we also have cake, muffins, pancakes, and waffles made with baking powder substitute. Now for the baking powder substitute, you mix a half a teaspoon cream of tartar with quarter teaspoon baking soda and use another substitute instead of baking powder. Okay, now we continue our list. We have cream, custard, ice cream, and milk. Anything made with milk, such as pudding and cream soup. We have sherbet um, or sorbet. It's S-H-O-R-B-R-T. That is a kind of ice cream I think that has um, less milk or no milk in it. I tried it already. Honestly, it doesn't taste anything like ice cream because you know when you saw a custom with ice cream, milky, creamy ice cream, and then they give you that. But anyways, I think I ate the lime and the orange flavor. Okay. So, anything made with, well, so have yogurt. Anything made with milk, or with milk products, you limit to half cup. You limit to half cup a day or a week. So that is like almost not eating it at all. Okay, so some of the other foods they mentioned that are good for dialysis patients. You have um, tortilla chips, but it's a plain tortilla chips. It has less um, salt and no added flavors. And hard candies, popsicles, and I also see olive oil and margarine on that list and now we're moving on to the foods that are low in potassium that dialysis patients can have so i'm mainly going to give you a list of fruits and vegetables so we have apples and cranberries and also the apple and cranberry juice are the two most recommended juices for dialysis patients. Then we have blueberries, grapes, that is on the fruits. We have lemons, limes, pears, um, I think that is the sweet pears. We have raspberries, strawberries, pineapple, tangerine, and watermelon. Now in my last video, I mentioned watermelon is a food that you can avoid, but on the Food that you can have, they say you can have watermelon, but a small slice, a very small slice. Okay, and some of the vegetables, they have onion, garlic, beets, but they recommend you use the canned beets because it is processed. It has a, it has a little less potassium in it. Then we have cauliflower, carrots, cabbage, cucumber, corn, radishes and bean sprouts okay now let me explain to you about some of the foods that i mentioned that are not good for allergy patients but we can still have according to how you prepare it so we have a substitute for mayonnaise we have a light mayonnaise and a substitute for cheese which is a dairy product we have cream cheese. Cream cheese, I think, is still made from dairy, but it is a lighter version of cheese. So we are allowed to eat that. Also, I forgot to mention popcorn. As a snack, popcorn is good. And the Rice Krispies in the pack, the sweet one, that is also good as a snack. And also, um, stuff like ground provision and 
Irish potatoes or sweet potatoes. With the Irish potatoes on the ground provision, there are ways of preparing it. The first way, you peel it and you put it to soak. You put it to soak for two to four hours and you throw the water and you boil it. So like the soaking removes most of the most of the um, potassium and phosphorus from it. And you boil it, you throw out the water and then you boil it again with twice the amount of water. And then you throw it out and you can serve it like that. Or you can boil it three times. You boil it, you throw the water, you boil it again, throw the water, each boil removes an amount of potassium from it. So that is for the ground provision. Also, I'm a person that really loves planting. So I learned a new method of preparing planting. Now it is said that the most potassium in the planting, the right planting, is secreted in the center part of the planting where it has all the little black seeds. So you split the planting open and you remove the section in the lining in the middle with all the black seeds and then prepare it. So that's how we have it in it. But also, as a dialysis patient, even if you remove the seeds or you remove the potassium from the provision, you should not go ahead and just have provision Vicky via all the time. You must also limit the amount of time that you have it per week or per month. Okay? And I think that is it for my diet. I think that's the last video for my diet. So, any extra questions that you want to ask me concerning my diet, anything you know that you did not hear, or anything else you want to know. Feel free to ask me below in the comment section and I will try to explain it to you. <clears throat> I'll try to explain it to you to the best that I can. And remember it's only what I have experienced or what I have learned throughout my ages and dialysis. So, yeah, I like a motivation for the day. Remember to trust in God. Put God first in everything that you are doing. Always pray. Because I know and I'm a living testimony that prayer really works. So don't forget to pray on a daily basis. Take a couple of minutes or seconds from each day and just say thank you Lord for everything. Nothing hard in doing that. And let me also say thank you to everybody out there who has motivated me in one way or the other. Huge shout out to all who has made donations towards my health and uh, I will give a better thank you and a better shout out to them in a next video and remember everybody always stay positive stay strong no matter what you're going through everything don't last for a lifetime every bad situation in your life will turn out to be good one day if you keep trusting God and praying that things will get better, it will get better. So have faith in God, believe in God, that he, and He will answer your prayer, and He will work in your favor. So once again, everybody, much love, and you don't know what I for always say, bless up everybody, and bless up yourself one time too, you don't know? Peace out.